Hey everyone, today we're talking about specificity in CSS. Such a weird word, specificity. When you have conflicting styles that are styling the same element or elements, CSS actually assigns a numeric specificity value. It calculates a number to see which one wins, which one is more specific. So in this video, we'll talk about how it works, how those numbers are calculated, and why it's worth your time to understand. Also, it's been a while since I updated you on my baby chickens, so at the end I'll show you some cute footage of them. They're growing way too fast. In my opinion, one of the most annoying things in web development is when you're writing some CSS styles that just don't apply. They're crossed off in the dev tools. And this is almost always caused by specificity issues. So here's an example, I have Bootstrap, uh, a simple nav bar included, and I wanna style the nav bar brand. This right here, I wanna change the color. So I select that class, it's called nav bar brand, but it doesn't work, I'm not getting purple. And if I inspect it with the dev tools, you can see it's crossed off. So we can also see the selector that is winning, that is more specific, it has two classes. Well, that makes sense, two classes would be more specific than one. So let's try the same thing, nav bar light, and then navbar brand. It still doesn't work, although this time it's kind of by design. Uh, they are equal, and my CSS is included before Bootstrap, which you probably wouldn't do. But if I wanted to make sure I was winning, my styles are winning at least, I could also add in an element selector. This is an anchor tag. So I'll say I want anchor tags with navbar brand inside of navbar light, and it finally works. So what is the actual calculation that's happening here? What is CSS doing to figure out that this is definitely more specific? And how would it change if I was using an ID or 10 element selectors? That's what we're here to talk about. I have some notes. You can find the link in the description, CSS specificity. I've updated my markup. Now we have a single H1. It has a class of title and an ID of main. And I have a couple styles. Which one is going to apply? So they all set color to something different. We have all H1s. This one is H1s inside of a div. This one is anything with a class of title and the ID main. Now this one is probably pretty straightforward. Most people know that IDs are extremely specific. They beat out everything else. So we save and we see color is set to purple. The basic rules you should know are that ID selectors are very, very specific. Next, we have class selectors. They're pretty specific. They have high scores, but not as high as IDs. Then we have simple element selectors. So things like H1 or div and H1. These are far below a class, and a class is far below an ID. There's a little chart down here where you can see an example of what I'm talking about. So type selectors are the least specific. H1, div, paragraph tag, image tag, even pseudo elements like first letter, things like that. Then we have class selectors, like the class title that we have right here, or navbar brand, navbar light. And then we have pseudo classes like hover and attribute selectors, like type equals text or href equals something. And then we have IDs, the next most specific. And then technically the very most specific thing possible are inline styles, where you would actually add the style directly to the element, which is not a good idea but you can do it. So I could set color to be, uh, what have we not used? Let's do teal and save, and now it's teal. That's going to beat anything, even an ID. And then just a couple side notes. Uh, there are some specific selectors that don't have an effect on specificity. So the universal or the star combinators, like uh, plus, greater than, space, those don't actually impact specificity. So this space right here, or if instead I had this, direct child, it doesn't actually make a difference. And then lastly, we have the important exception. Important is sometimes very tempting to use. If you have something that is not being applied and you're not really sure exactly why, or there's not an easy way to fix it without adding a bunch of markup or super long selectors, you could use important. Important will override the other declarations. But what's interesting is it actually doesn't directly alter any sort of specificity score. It is its own entity. It's sort of like not a number versus a regular number in JavaScript. The problem with important is that it's considered bad practice in most cases because it can make your CSS difficult to understand and debug. It's hard to find issues. And if you want to override it at another point, uh, it can be very frustrating. But as an example, I can add it here where this is the least specific selector we have in just a single H1, but now it wins, it beats everything else. 
So how do we actually calculate the specificity? Let's talk about that now. So essentially there are four different scores that are kept track of. We'll call them A, B, C, and D. And it's kind of like a four digit number, but you'll see it's not exactly like that. So A, B, C, and D, where A is inline styles, B is ID selectors, C is class, pseudo class, and attribute selectors, and D is elements and pseudo element selectors. So if something has no styles applied, our score is 0000. zero, zero, zero. But those commas are there for a reason, because you can actually have a score here that is like 20 or 15. And it is not the same as one here and five here. It would be 15 right here, and we'll talk about why. So here's an example. This is just a straight up inline style. We put one point in column A, which is inline styles. So that's what we end up with. And you can kind of think of it like 1000, but it's not the same thing. Then we have an example with an ID. Here the specificity is 0100, so this is lower than this. Next up, we have a single class selector, so we add one point into the third spot, the C column, so 0010, and then here's a single element selector, 0001. All right, so that's when we have simple ones, like a single class or a single element. But then when things get more complicated, you can have longer selectors that have more pieces and our scores can grow. So here's some more examples. Here we have some markup. We have a div with a UL with three LIs. So this one right here, two element selectors. So that's two points in the fourth column, which looks like this. Each one of these is one point. So we have two right there. Now here's another example. We're using two classes, list and item. So we get two points in this second column. So 0020, and this is higher than this one. And then another example, I'm doing a class, an element, and a class. So the score here is one element in this column, and then two classes, 0021. And you could compare that to this one, 0020, because we have two classes, but no elements. So this is more specific than this one. And then one more example here, we have an ID, and then an element, so the score would be 0101. Again, you don't need to be an expert at calculating this, but it's important to understand that this exists and to know the general hierarchy. Now let's revisit this part about the commas and how this is not technically a base 10 number. So if you had something like this as a score, I'm just gonna delete this. If we had zero comma zero comma zero two, then you could think of that as two. But then let's say that we had a selector this is not a good idea, but our selector had like 11 divs. I'm not gonna count them, but let's say this is close to 11. This would be 11 points in this column, 11 elements, but you wouldn't write it like this. It wouldn't be one comma one. It doesn't overflow or carry over like a traditional base 10 number. You would just have 11 there. We could have this and then compare it to a single class like, I don't know, bright. This is one class, so the score for this would look like this right here, and this beats this. So even though we have 11 elements here, so we get 11 points in this column, we have a single class. We're now in this column, which is always going to be higher than any number of selectors we could have over there. And I'll prove it very quickly. Here, I spent way too long typing 11 divs out. They're all nested with a single span at the very end, nested inside each one. Over here, I've written a selector. It includes 11 div tags and then span. So it would get 12 points in the rightmost column for its score. And let's set its color to be orange red, save, and it does work. But as soon as I introduce a single class into the mix, let's call it a class of active, and I style that class, and I'll give it a color of orchid, that wins no matter how many divs or how many elements, it's never going to equal a single class. And one more thing I'd like to show you is this really cool website called CSS Stats. And you put in any URL you want. I put in a couple, bing.com, I think I did eBay, Google, YouTube, and it analyzes the CSS. It tells you the fonts that they use, uh, the number of rules in their CSS, selectors, declarations, properties, the different unique colors they use, background colors, text colors, fonts, a whole bunch of things. But if you scroll down, they have these really cool charts that actually graph out specificity across the entire file. So this axis down here represents the beginning of the file and the end of the file. 
and then this is a specificity of zero or low specificity and then more specific stuff up here so you can see here there's a lot of peaks and valleys and generally this is bad generally you want your most specific things at the end because it means more work to override something halfway through a file. You want to put the most specific things down way at the end and the basic things like elements at the top of your file so that your chart could look instead of like this, it could look something more like this. Otherwise, if you start with very specific stuff at the beginning, you set a high bar for overriding it later on in the file and it's harder to follow logically. Of course, there are many, many ways of organizing CSS. This is just one that I like to follow, and I just like these charts anyways. Uh, you can see a couple other examples. I think here we have Google. Google's is pretty up and down, some very specific stuff early on. I mean, we've got a score of 231. Let's see, there's one that I thought was pretty good. Here we go, eBay. It's not perfect, but it's generally upwards trending. So the most specific stuff comes towards the end, as you can see here, there's no massive spikes at the beginning. And that just makes the CSS easier to maintain and easier to override styles if you need to. So that is the basics of specificity. I am glad to be done saying the word specificity. Uh, it's a real struggle here. If you enjoyed the video, uh, please leave a comment, subscribe for more. I have some pretty big announcements coming up soon. I'm really excited about, so stay tuned to my channel to learn more. And now it's time for the chicken update. So here are my baby chicks a couple weeks ago, so tiny, and just a few weeks later, they've morphed into these creatures. And this is Junior, the brown tan one. Butters is the white one. That one doesn't have a name. She just likes to loaf around like that. Junior likes to cause all sorts of trouble. And Stevie is my favorite little cuddle bug, aren't you? I would never eat you. Just your children and eggs.